This was not a normal Lufthansa flight. The crew harassing me over policies that don't exist, a lounge with a spa, and there's bagpipes for some reason today on Marcus Travels. The way I was treated is so schizophrenic, it's almost like I was flying two different airlines on this trip. The first leg was from Basel, Switzerland to Frankfurt in Germany on Lufthansa City Line, which I guess technically is a different airline, but it's sold as one product. This is only a 35 minute hop. Next, I flew to Edinburgh in Scotland on the Lufthansa mainline product, and that's about two hours. This video is not sponsored, and given what I have to say, you will see that Lufthansa wanted nothing to do with me. If you want to skip to the crazy behavior on the second leg or any part of the video, just use the chapter markings on the timeline. Welcome to the Euro Airport here outside of Basel. Let's go inside and get ourselves checked in on this Lufthansa flight to Frankfurt. I usually prefer to fly with hand luggage only, but the first leg is operated by a regional jet. Typically, Lufthansa will force you to gate check your bag, but then they deliver it to you at the aircraft upon landing of the first leg. I've had bad experiences with Lufthansa's delivery at aircraft in the past. I will link to that video at the end of this one. Because I have star gold status, I can use the business class check-in desk even though I'm flying in economy today. And thanks to that status, I also have access to the Skyview lounge here at the Basel Euro Airport. Welcome to the Skyview Lounge here at the Euro Airport in Basel. It's pretty quiet in here as always. And you can see behind me and there's plenty of light. There is so much seating. There is lots of different drinks to choose from. And the food selection is uh, okay. I think the lounge in Frankfurt is going to be a lot better in the food department. It's a nice lounge. Downstairs, there is a cold breakfast buffet, and there's also a pond and plenty of natural light. Upstairs, there's hot and cold food items, more drinks, there's coffee, there's just lots of space up here, and a terrace for plane spotting. All right, it's almost time to board. Let's go down these stairs and get ourselves over to the Lufthansa city line that's going to take us over to Frankfurt. I'll see you on board. Our aircraft today is a Bombardier Canadair Regional Jet 900 or CRJ 900. It's a small and uncomfortable aircraft and nobody likes these. One reason is that they use these built-in air stairs and if you have limited mobility, climbing these very steep stairs will be a challenge. Case in point, on this flight two passengers did in fact have limited mobility. The airport had to bring out this elevator contraption so that they could board comfortably. But air stairs don't have to be this miserable. Check out this A320 from EasyJet just a few gates away. These low angle air stairs are very much more comfortable than the CRJ setup. On this aircraft there is a so called business class section, but all it means is an economy seat with the aisle seat blocked. The overhead bin space on the CRJ900 is very limited. You will not fit a standard carry-on in here. That's why they force you to gate check it. But my small Osprey day pack fits very nicely. Welcome aboard the CRJ900. That's going to take us over to Frankfurt, operated today by Lufthansa City Line. We're going to get to how the crew managed to make this a memorable flight. And on this leg, it was memorable in a positive sense, cue foreshadowing for the next leg. But first, a quick seat tour. This emergency exit row has lots of space. But I almost didn't get the seat that I had pre-booked, because two days before I got an email telling me that all pre-booked seats for this entire journey or four legs had changed. There are individual air nozzles above the seat, which is nice. There is a buy on board menu here, but there was actually no service on this flight. Except for the classic Lufthansa treatment of one free bottle of water and one piece of chocolate. As we take off from Basel, I really miss the good old days of a few years ago. At that time, Lufthansa offered a simple but filling sandwich and a full drinks selection on these flights included in the economy fare. This was one way of Lufthansa to set themselves apart from the low-cost carriers. 
But there was a real highlight on this flight as well. One of the crew members noticed that I was filming. The window next to the emergency exit is a bit small, so she asked me if I wanted to move to a different seat to get a better view for my takeoff and landing videos. I declined, but that was a really nice idea. As we landed, she also asked if I wanted to stay behind for a few minutes once the aircraft was empty to film some more. This was a really nice gesture, especially since some other companies have rushed me off the aircraft in a similar situation. But as we arrive at Frankfurt, that's the end of the courteous behavior, and we switch into Lufthansa Psycho mode. Welcome to Frankfurt Airport. We are at the A gates at the moment. My next departure into Edinburgh is from the Bravo gates. But I'm going to check out the Senator Lounge right there behind me before I transfer terminals or gate areas, whatever it's called. I entered the Senator Lounge at the A gates filming this footage, making a very conscious effort not to film the crew. One of the staff members gets upset that I filmed her, which I did not do. I even showed her the entire clip. They call me over to the front desk and they say that I cannot film without permission of the media department at Lufthansa. So I say, perfect, let's get in touch with the media department. I have a layover of four hours, I got all the time in the world. Of course, no one is able to show me where it says that I'm not allowed to film, but I take their word for it. So now I'm in the lounge, and instead of me enjoying a delicious meal, they have me standing there at the desk for like 15 minutes while they try to find the right person at the so-called media department. For some reason, nobody is able to get a hold of anybody from there, despite now four people being involved. Soon it emerges that this policy was entirely made up. So we agree that I can stay in the lounge, just don't film the faces of the crew, which I did not do and I do not do as a matter of principle. In order to not anger anyone, I relegate myself to this corner of the Senator Lounge. Welcome to the Senator Lounge here at the A Gates at Frankfurt Airport. It's a really nice lounge and they have delicious snacks, definitely worth a visit if you're here on the Schengen side of the gates. Will this filming policy get more ridiculous as we board the next leg? Yes, yes it will. But first I have to get to the B gates and that is quite a trek. Do not underestimate the connection time at Frankfurt airport. First you have to go down several levels. You can use the elevator, but I took the stairs this time. Then there's this never ending tunnel to the B gates and I think just this one tunnel was about a 10 minute walk. And then we go up the stairs on the other side. This is not a convenient connection. If you can avoid changing terminals at Frankfurt airport, do it. Lufthansa's other hub in Munich is much better in this regard. Welcome to the Senator Lounge here at the Bravo Gates at Frankfurt Airport. Here too, they have a couple of hot items. I just had a delicious hot stew as a starter and I'm gonna definitely try one of the potato-based dishes in just a moment. The lounge is fairly full today, but uh, there is plenty of seating in this area. It's a nice lounge. The buffet of food options in the Senator Lounge at the B Gates is also very good. In general, what sets apart these Lufthansa lounges is that there are high quality hot meals available. And this lounge also has a very extensive candy buffet. There's also this relaxation section branded to City Lights with a tiny roped off section for first class passengers, though I think you'll have more fun at the dedicated first class terminal. And just opposite there is an entire spa where you can get treatments like massages for a fee. On this layover I ended up getting some work done at the cafe style tables and then relaxing in this chill zone with great views of the aircraft outside. In this lounge nobody complained about me filming. There is something special about the area around gate B43. It looks like they are trying different entertainment concepts. Welcome to gate Bravo 41. This is where the flight to Edinburgh is going to depart from. The gate area is a complete zoo. Uh, there was even like an extra check before you even get to the gate. Uh, there were two gentlemen checking passport and um, 
boarding passes before you even get to where the chairs are. I'm not sure what that is all about, maybe a new security procedure. Well, we're going to board the plane in about maybe 15 or 20 minutes or so. As I board, you will note that I am specifically pointing my camera away from the crew and we have this interaction. Hello, hello. Just a second, are you filming? You can't film any people on board with if they don't want to know and I don't want to be filmed either. That's why I pointed it this way when I yeah, boarded. Yeah, because but there are also auto passengers coming in, you can't do that here on board. Yeah? I'm sorry, I appreciate it. So the purser tells me, do not film any people. Yes, of course, no worries. But because I'm getting so tired of these made-up policies, I also ask him if I can get that instruction in writing. And I say that he, of course, doesn't have to give it to me now when he's busy boarding, but at some point during the flight, I would like to have it. Five to ten minutes later, the purser comes over, sits next to me in this very comfortable exit row. He shows me something on an iPad that was from some version of the in-flight magazine, but the overall point is do not film people. Welcome aboard this Lufthansa flight to Edinburgh. We should arrive there in less than two hours. So our conversation started a bit combative, but it's about to take a weird turn. Because now he noticed that there was a huge coffee stain on the back of the tray table. And he said, I think half-jokingly, don't film that. And then he proceeded to clean it up. So now this filming ban is less about privacy and more about making the airline look bad. I'm shocked that this would be the real reason. But then this happens. Just before this bagpipe concert begins, the purser says, get your camera ready. That is very interesting, since I'm not allowed to film people. Hmm, I wonder what's happening here. And the purser is in this shot, and I've partly blurred him out because I really do not want to film the crew. But you know what? He's filming the whole thing on his phone. I thought you were not allowed to film people. So we're now having a full-blown bagpipe concert on this flight to Scotland. Because there happened to be a Scottish band on board. What's even happening anymore? At the end of the flight, the purser asks me, did I make it up to you? I don't know how to answer that. Here's what I had to say just after landing. Welcome to a sunny Edinburgh. I'm going to grab the tram into the city from right there behind me. I'll say my conclusions for the studio, but I do note that that uh, bagpipe concert on the plane really changed the mood. On the one hand, I don't like made-up policies and I don't particularly like bagpipe music. But on the other hand, this was definitely a unique experience. But it's also potentially problematic. I never asked permission from the media department of the airline because when the airline has a chance to prepare, it's not an authentic video. It no longer describes accurately the actual passenger experience if you weren't a YouTuber. People change their behaviors when a camera is involved. In this case, Lufthansa ran the entire gambit from please don't film any people to here's a special concert for you. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is that the purser may have felt bad for telling me not to film. And that he indeed wanted to make it up to me. And that's a good impulse. We make mistakes, we try to make it right. So I think he did the right thing. This was the first time I got any special treatment because I have a YouTube channel. And I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about it. If you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments below. If you've been getting value from this video so far, you can buy me a coffee with the link in the description or donate via Super Thanks right here on YouTube. Thank you very much for doing that. I have flown Lufthansa a lot. Click or tap the screen right here to watch my video that really calls into question why is this a full service airline? Thank you very much for watching Marcus Travels today.